In Island Fever, Roscoe and his friends go on an adventure to escape their problems. The adventure takes them to new places and new heights that go beyond the page. The adventure becomes more animated and dynamic as the adventure progresses from the page to the screen to the world around you. You can take the adventure with you as you hold it in the palm of your hand. You can send the adventure across the world with packages. You can wear it on your back and become part of the adventure yourself, even to the point where you are the adventure. If you take it a step further, you can control the adventure no matter where you are, because with Island Fever, the goal is to redefine immersive storytelling so that you have a deeper connection to the stories and the characters. So there's this thing that happens in Island Fever season four, where after the events of season three, Roscoe and Cadbury and Vanessa, they had to leave the city. And after they left the city, they had to kind of just go into hiding because they needed to let the, the heat, you know, that was attached to their name and their likeness kind of die down because they, you know, ran into a whole bunch of different things with the law and they got in a big fight in the middle of the city and they had it to essentially, you know, leave and, uh, and try to find a, a new place to go. During that adventure outside the city, Roscoe decides to uh, take everybody on a journey to the edge of the island. As they're going on the edge of the island, they ended up seeing a whole bunch of hot air balloons floating in the sky. And to Roscoe, he was like, oh, man, this is freaking crazy. And he was super excited about it. And so what he did is he ended up stumbling into a guy that hooked him up with a hot air balloon. And unbeknownst to Cadbury, who's sort of looking after everybody, Roscoe decides to volunteer everybody to actually go on that hot air balloon ride with him. And so Vanessa hops in. Uh, Roscoe ends up grabbing a rope and putting it around Cadbury. And then they set sail on this hot air balloon adventure. Roscoe has never really been in a lot of places around the island. He's just been to the city and probably a little bit outside the city. And so for this, this was uncharted territory for him. And because he's so adventurous, he couldn't help but actually want to see what he could see. Uh, he was really excited about it, especially because he wants to explore and he's curious and he wants to uh, be able to find experiences that really give him his fix and his curiosity. And so as I was writing the story, I wanted to really see how far we could push that, uh, that concept of uncharted territory and going on an adventure that spans, that goes beyond the island. And so I wanted to take it to a whole bunch of different areas, such as overlooking the city and going past the city, seeing all the different buildings, to going to the edge of the island where you're able to see the shore and see the mountains even to the point where we're going through fields that are vast. And throughout that journey, they find a whole bunch of different creatures from mermaids to flying seagulls to even the tree of life. And more importantly, they branch off past the island and they run into mystical creatures like giant squids and octopuses. But I didn't want that adventure to stop there. And more importantly, I wanted to find ways to incorporate technology so that you can create a new adventure that goes beyond the adventures that are written on the pages. In many ways, I wanted to take the adventure off the page and give people an opportunity to put their own twist on where Roscoe goes and what are the things that Roscoe can see. When I initially thought about what experiences I wanted to take from the page, especially when it came to the hot air balloon, I thought about just simple animation because with a lot of my work, it's grounded in animating experiences and those experiences are relevant to the stories that I'm telling. And so since I had these two images that I originally created when I came up with the idea of Island Fever, I want to just recreate those images. So it was two scenes 
Uh, one of those scenes was actually a scene from the actual adventure. And then another was, was the actual cover for the chapter. And so I animated the chapter and I animated that scene where it's just going over a body of water. And then the other scene is going over a field. And I want to just see what that looked like to just bring it to life so that you can actually see them going on that hot air balloon adventure and what that actually looks like uh, from a static image to an animated experience. And then from there, I was like, how do I take this from the screen in and of itself uh, from the context of the digital world and integrate that into the physical world? And that journey led me to some interesting insights. And so I had this idea for a cube, very much like the magic cube, which is a image tracking cube that has six different sides on it. And each side has a different variation of an image. And you're able to track those very much like image tracking with books and pictures, but it puts it in the same context. And so I created a cube that had my own designs of characters. And I wanted to find ways to allow people to take that adventure from the page and take it with them. And I incorporated the uh, hot air balloon adventure experience into that cube to where not only are you able to walk around with that cube, but you're also able to take Roscoe in and on the adventure with you, no matter where you go. And because it's portable, it provides you with an opportunity to share the adventure and retell the story in the world that you live in. And so in many ways, I wanted to bring the hot air balloon adventure to life. And the cube was the first iteration of that. Then when I came up with the idea of having packaging for the plushies, I wanted to find a way to incorporate that cube experience into it as well. And so when I created a cylinder packaging, I thought, okay, how do I incorporate movement? How do I incorporate something that is relevant to the story, but also unique to the form factor that we have? And so I ended up taking the idea of the hot air balloon and since they're going out into the sky and they are going on this continuous adventure that brings them to new heights, what if I was able to create a package that embodies that experience by illustrating a image of an extension of that adventure and then augmenting that so that it really comes to life and becomes an extension of that moment that happens in the story. And so from there, I cre recreated the experience that I had for the cube, but I added a little twist to it to where it fits the form factor a lot more succinctly. And more importantly, when I ship out packages, those packages become additional adventures for Roscoe to have to explore the world around him. That goes beyond just the paper and the pages that I had for the stories. And also even the cues, because, you know, for better or for worse, this is all about bringing the adventure to life and creating new adventures that, for one way or another, can't be written. After I finished the cube and the packaging, I thought to myself, what is another way to integrate this adventure experience into a unique user experience that allows me to continue to tell this story? And... I've always wanted to create a augmented reality t-shirt. And in some ways, this project and this adventure lended to it very well because if I was able to integrate the hot air balloon adventure into a cube and the hot air balloon adventure into a package, then what does it look like for me to integrate the hot air balloon into a person's existence and being? And so I came up with the idea of taking the shirt, the concept of an augmented reality shirt, taking the design that I have for that shirt, which I really took from a old sketchbook page that I had that was sort of referencing this before I finished the actual chapter. And I reworked it so that it worked as its own unique design that spoke to the experience that they were having, the adventure that they were having, but then also being able to integrate the person into that experience as well. 
so that when you actually see the experience, uh, you see the person in it, and no matter where the person goes, the adventure follows them. And I thought that was very powerful because it allows me to really allow people to be in the world and be part of that adventure, just like the characters are part of that adventure uh, from the beginning, from those pages that I wrote. And after that, I thought, okay, well, if I'm able to incorporate apparel into it, what if I was able to incorporate face tracking and have their face incorporated into the experience so that they can utilize their own existence, their likeness as a storytelling device for the adventure to continue, whether it's circling around their body or circling around their head. I thought that it would create a unique connection from the reader and the user to the characters and the adventures that they're going on. In many ways, they're invested in the adventure because they're a part of that adventure in and of itself by virtue of them looking at their screen and seeing themselves in the context of that adventure. And it really takes this whole create your own adventure concept and, and turns it to a whole new level, mainly because each person's adventure with the same source material will look completely different because we all have our own unique qualities and traits that we offer to the world. And so by offering ourselves to the adventure that Roscoe, Vanessa, and Cadbury goes on, you're able to create a unique adventure that only you can come up with, that is wholly yours. It is a concept of ownership of the story that in many ways has not been tapped into because it's so reliant on an imagination and the imagination can be stunted by things that don't just work outside the box. You kind of have to make it up. But when the things that you make up gives you feedback and the feedback continues to allow you to explore, that is what makes immersive storytelling great because immersive storytelling is the embodiment of unbounding a story from pages, from physical, tangible realities and allowing you to integrate your own reality into it. And so after I did face filters, after I did shirts, after I did cubes, after I did packaging, I wanted to think about this whole idea of markerless experiences. And the markerless experiences are one of my favorite because no matter where you are, no matter what you look like, no matter the context, you're able to bring the adventure to the world around you. As long as you're able to track that world and as long as you're able to exist in that world, you can have that adventure go into that world with you. Originally started by me just finding a way to place the hot air balloon in my living room so that I could see the context of how big the hot air balloon is and being able to utilize that in a specific space, right? But then I started to take it a step further and say, what if I could actually control that hot air balloon experience? No matter where I decide to take them, they will go on that adventure and that adventure will continue as long as I have control over that experience. And so I took that outside and I just placed that into my parking lot and I was like, okay, well, what if after they left the island, they came to Reno and they went around an apartment complex just to scope out the area. And I created a character controller and allowed them to accelerate, decelerate, go up and down in that experience. And then I thought, oh, wow, what if you're able to record this? And so you have a, your own unique log of where Roscoe and Vanessa and everybody went to because you were able to control that experience and, and take them all the way around the world, right? And so this idea and concept of creating a hot air balloon experience where the characters are trying to escape their problems and they go on an adventure to, in some ways, fuel their curiosity and find themselves. And then finding ways, unique ways to take that concept 
and bring that into the world of the user, the world of the reader, and take that adventure beyond the page and integrate that into a variety of different physical, tangible medias, but then also give people the opportunity to control where that adventure goes. And based off of your control and where you want them to go, that determines what their adventure looks like. And to go back to the idea of creating your own stories and telling your own stories, when you provide people the tools with the intellectual property and give people a foundation and a baseline for it, you're able to allow people and empower people to tell their own stories uh, through the likenesses of your creativity. And in many ways, you're kind of giving people a canvas and you're giving people the paints and the paintbrushes and you give people templates to fit within, but they have the opportunity to use those templates or not, or they can remix and recreate those templates. And so I think this is a very empowering way to tell stories, immersive stories in ways that provide deeper connections with the actual users and the readers, because Immersive storytelling is all about creating deeper connections and being able to share those experiences and learn from those experiences and be inspired uh, through the source material. And that source material will then, in one way or another, continue to evolve as the technology evolves and as people get older and become more informed. And so this was a, a really interesting experience that I... I'm so glad that I was able to create, you know, because it really did. It started from, you know, this book right here. It started from these pages. It started from me wanting to create a story that allows people to go on an adventure and it empowers people to go on an adventure. And I provide people with access points in a whole variety of different ways from the books to the images and the posters to cubes to shirts to face filters, to character controllers and gamified experiences, and even packaging. And so because I spent a lot of time working on these and these concepts, I'm excited to be able to share this with you. And so I hope that if you get the opportunity to play around with it, or you could download it, because it's available on the Island Fever app, you can go on those adventures and take Roscoe and Vanessa and Cadbury with you. And then you can share those adventures and have deeper connections with those characters uh, in ways that I hope that people would have.